Welcome, I'm here with Ryder to go over the install and the materials used for the first selectable sway bar for a Jeep XJ. So let's get into it. So what the sway bar comes with is uh, you get two arms, laser cut out of 1018 steel, and then the shaft coupler with the quarter inch keyway is also made out of 1018 TIG welded. And it comes with this 4140 uh, one inch round shaft. And then you get a 30 spline Ison hub. Uh, I went with a 30 spline because it's better than 26, a lot stronger. And then inside this hub uh, is a 4140 uh, 30 spline hub gear that I've made and TIG welded to this shaft as well. Also, it comes with this outboard bearing to support this side when it's not locked. And it keeps prevents from side loading and that side loading could damage the sway bar. Also comes with two um, prothane poly bushings and then some spacer blocks to clear your frame. Now that we've gone over the materials used to make the sway bar, we'll go over the assembly of the sway bar. Then afterwards, we'll go into the installation of it. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're gonna go over the assembly for when you remove it from the box, it's gonna come disassembled like this. And uh, there's a few important steps to assembling the sway bar to get it timed right. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. All right, the first step of this assembly is to slide this arm over the shaft. And to get it timed properly, you need to align the lock indicator with the end of this arm straight down it. Uh, the next step is to take your outboard bearing. And you have to use anti-seize on these threads because the hardware is stainless and you don't want them to seize up. Okay, after you've installed the anti-seize into the threads of this outboard bearing, just slide it over the shaft. Don't force it because you'll gall up the shaft, so just take your time. All right, after you've installed your outboard bearing, uh, once again, just make sure this lock indicator is pointed straight down the arm, and you can uh, loosely thread in these uh, bolts. All right, the next step after you put your shaft collar on is uh, you can take your poly bushing out of the bracket and then just slide it on. All right, after you've gotten to this point in the assembly, we can move over to your rig and line up these brackets on your frame rail and drill out the holes. All right, if you haven't yet, this would be a great time to remove your stock sway bar before you start drilling holes or doing any of that. So that's what we're gonna get into right now. So once you have your stock sway bar removed, you just want the ears coming off the axle to be looking just like this with no studs, no nothing inside of them. And you wanna make sure they are straight. If they're not straight, then just uh, hammer them straight with a sledgehammer and you should be good. As part of the installation, you will need to drill two holes into your unibody rails to install the sway bar. And you will need to hammer this little lip flat just so this spacer will fit flush. And the first hole to make it easier on you is this hole in the unibody rail, this uh, small threaded hole in between these two larger holes. You will need to drill it out for the spacer. And what size drill bit should they use? 716. A 716th drill bit will fit perfect for the bolts and the spacer. So there is the channels cut out into the unibody frame through the stiffener that I welded on there previously. And then there is the bolt holes in the bottom there drilled. And in the with the kit in the future, the bolt will have the washer captured to it, uh, just welded together. And then it will be cut and notched to make it fit inside of the frame rail a lot easier for you guys. All right, to make this easier for you, once you have this hole drilled out, you go an inch and a half from the edge or the corner of the frame rail in is where the hole will be right there. And then from the center of this hole, where this bolt goes through three inches. So an inch and a half in and three inches from the center of this bolt hole. So with mine, I have the external transmission cooler in the way. Uh, if you don't have an external trans cooler in this location, you won't have any issues bolting up the sway bar. But since I have a larger transmission cooler down here, 
we're gonna have to relocate it or or just make it have enough clearance so we could fit the sway bar right in between this plate and these fittings but if you don't have a trans cooler you won't have any issues with this step of the process all right so if you have two people your best bet is just push the bushings on with each person and install it like that <laughs> after we run it through the trans cooler lines of course In place. There we go. And the goal is just to get it finger tight for now. So we got the sway bar finger tight on there. And we have just enough clearance with the transmission cooler. But the next step is uh, put the grade 8 bolts on the end of the arms. So then we could put the links on. All right, so your best bet is to just bolt one side up first. So then it's lined up on the other side to run the key and the other arm to secure it in place. So I got about a half to three quarters of an inch of space on each side. Um, that's just mine because of my bumper brackets and my unibody stiffeners. But you want to have equal spacing with each arm between the frame rail and you should be good. All right, before you tighten this retaining washer, just tighten these four socket heads um, hand tight. You don't want to go too hard because it'll be a pain in the butt to get off later. But once these four are tightened, then you can tighten the retaining screw and washer on the end of the sway bar. Also just hand tight. Um, depending on your spacing and frame stiffeners, uh, it's de designed so there's a small gap right here so that when you tighten down this washer, it can have a little tension on it and it won't back it out. And also, uh, put a little anti-seize in that hole because this is a stainless uh, screw. Here we go, this is the completed product on the Jeep. Everything is clearanced right, everything is tight. The last step is we're gonna go over the maintenance of the hub, just so it works well for a long, long time. All right, for maintenance, it's probably a monthly monthly occasion do your maintenance and especially if you're living in like wet weather um, make sure before you take the cover off the hub that it's in the free position or all the springs will fly out and then if it, once it's in the free position you gotta slide the mechanism out just give it just a couple of pumps of grease you don't want to put too much in there because it'll pack it in and then jam up your mechanism. And then if you see here, there's a witness mark if you ever rebuild this hub or take it apart. These two lines need to line up or your sway bar will be out of time. And then when you're putting the uh, faceplate back on, just make sure you put the lock indicator facing straight down the arm in the same position you took it out. And then when you put these 10 millimeter bolts in, just do them um, snug. You don't want to use an impact because they're pretty fine thread and you'll strip them out. So we have the Jeep fully back together. I'm gonna unlock the hub, back the Jeep out, then we're gonna flex this thing out and uh, fully test it. We got Ryder on the forklift right now. We're gonna flex out the Jeep to really show you and test out the sway bar setup.
all right so you guys see with the flex of the forklift that this sway bar is legit on unlocking and locking so if you guys are interested in picking one of these up to make your sway bar setup on your xj a lot better i will have riders facebook instagram and email down below so you guys can contact them to pick one of these up for your cherokee and if you've gotten this far i want to thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye you guys <laughs>